steps 10,000 calories, 1,000 to confirm, sure. All right, we're off. In some ways, Time and Tide Watches is like a bakery. We need to sometimes bring you the hottest bread, and that is what's on my wrist right now. The new Tag Heuer connected 42 millimeter watch, which I'm, like I just said to the team, now this, this is a watch that could trick the world. Previous versions in 45 have been very large, and to me, still quite noticeably a smartwatch, whereas this watch with its chamfered edge, with its nicely finished surfaces with its look of stainless steel. This is gonna fool a lot of people and certainly on the wrist, we have something that wears very much like a mechanical watch. So it's a great place to start. It's an exciting moment for me because frankly, I've evolved past wearing 45 millimeter watches myself. So the 42 is the one that has my attention. I've just spent probably how long, like 10 minutes, setting it up on my phone, going through the process that you will go through when you get yours. So I can give you that insight. I'm gonna be open and honest with all of you. I have not worn this for a week. I have not put it entirely through its paces. There's some things I'm looking forward to getting into about this, but right now, I'm gonna feed back to you from the bakery with the hot bread. It's just come in, it's on the wrist. Let's get stuck into some of the details. Now this smartwatch, this connected watch could have the best tech in the world. But if it's 45 millimeters plus, heavy and ungainly on the wrist, to me, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna get worn. So let's get into what I consider to be the real breakthrough attributes of this watch for Tag Heuer that make it a very wearable proposition. Firstly, 42 millimeters. So we have a watch that is three millimeters smaller than the Edition 3 and the new Edition 4, which continues the 45 millimeter tradition, but certainly wears very, very comfortably. Also, it is under the 50 millimeter level for lug to lug, so fits well within my seven inch wrist. The second criteria for fit and feel is this one, the thickness. How much does this rise off the wrist? Well, because it's such a nice and sculpted case with quite a wide chamfer, creating almost a pebble type profile, we see that it is 14 millimeters, which is not small, but when you consider the sculptured nature of the case, it feels to me thinner than that. So the second part of fit and feel is the weight on wrist. Now this watch is, and it's gonna keep pinging me because I've now connected it to my phone. I don't wanna know about emails right now. It is 95 grams on the wrist, which is really comparable to a 42 millimeter steel, stainless steel watch on strap. And that's what this case material is made of. It is not steel look, it is stainless steel. So on the wrist, you're getting that quality Swiss watch feel, and it's really comparable to similar watches on leather straps. It's a lot lighter than a stainless steel watch on bracelet, obviously, which runs to sort of 140 to 180 grams. I've weighed my GMT Master 2 before, and it's in that 168, 170 gram territory. Lastly, fit and feel is how's the bracelet go? This is a rubber strap. Uh, it has a deployant that's, I've, I've had plenty of tag wear deployants in my time. They're very reliable, basic, feels good, feels secure on the wrist. Now, another thing I immediately notice about this watch is a thinner bezel and a bezel that is actually under the sapphire crystal. Obviously that's part of the size equation here. We might've lost a couple of mil from reducing that outer bezel to under the sapphire crystal. And to my eyes, it has that quite delicate execution as the Ortavia bezel which is slimmer than most and has a nice sort of curvature to it. So that's what it reminds me of. I think that might be intentional, but certainly the bezel looks fantastic under the glass. And if that's what's helped reduce its size, then that was a good design decision. Okay, so that bezel is a really lovely design feature and the fact that it's physical as opposed to a digital element is something that appeals to me because again, I'm used to looking at Ortavia bezels and I think this has that same curved glass feel to it. However, it does compromise a tiny bit on screen space. The size of the Edition 4 in 45 millimeters is 1.39 inches across and in this 42 millimeter version with the fixed bezel, we have it at 1.28 inches across. 
A, another change on the 42 millimeter is a larger crown. And the crown is really your key interface for this watch. It's something that you press to activate. It's something that you can scroll with. So an easier to manipulate crown is a good thing. It is a little bit larger, but it nestles quite nicely between these two angled chronograph pushes. Again, this is a, a very deceptive watch. Okay, the last attribute of this watch that really matters is not just the materials of the strap and the deployment, but also the quick change nature of this strap. You simply put a thumb or any fingernail into that and it simply lifts off. There are a range of straps available. There's rubber, there's leather, there is stainless steel. So you can actually get that full kind of luxury watch, real watch experience with a steel bracelet. If you choose, that will of course be much heavier than the 95 grams that this watch is right now. Now, for those who are waiting for the tech specs, here they are. This uses a Bluetooth 5.0 interface and its new functionality is an altimeter function which is great for knowing your altitude, I guess, if that, that's ever useful to you. The existing functions that are super useful are the heart rate. It has a compass, it has a barometer. Uh, all of these functions were on the previous versions. The best thing about this watch that I have been so excited to try since I saw the animation is a guided workout function. Now, the reason I like this is that not only does the, the workout person reflected in this animation look lifelike, it also really helps with the way you do workouts and the way you do certain sets. Form is critical in fitness. If you're doing a sit up wrong, you're probably doing yourself more damage than good. So I find this something I'm really keen to try out, which is going through a workout that is pre-programmed and creating workout uh, sets, I suppose, of different exercises, but seeing the correct form in the animation. I think that's really cool. Now, aside from that bells and whistles of a great workout function, the thing that I am quite heart warmed to see is 30% more battery life. If there is anything that ruins my day on a nearly daily basis, it is a dead phone battery. So to think that I just need to charge this overnight and never worry about it again for a day is important to me. 30% is a significant whack of extra battery. So what we're talking about in terms of the specs is 330 milliamp hours in the 42 mil and then 430 milliamp hours in the 45 mil. Lastly, we have a Snapdragon 4100 plus processor. I don't really know what that means, but the graphics are all pretty fluid. So the Tag Heuer connected journey continues. We covered the first watch, the generation one, what feels like about 25 years ago when I lived in a different suburb and I had a different family. It's the same family, they were just a bit smaller. Uh, my dog was a puppy. It's, it's been a long journey. This is by far the most exciting version of the Tag Heuer connected watch that I've ever held in my hands, mostly because it's reasonably sized. I do like a smaller watch compared to a 45. So this has been something I've been very keen to get my hands on. And we're rushing it through to you. Like I said, we're a bakery today. We're gonna to get this bread out while it's hot. This watch was announced at LVMH Watch Week a few months ago, but this is really, we are one of the first to have it in our hands. We feel duty bound to bring you the important information first up. Now the watch tells me I'm still at 70, 69 beats per minute. So I probably need to calm down. It's been a, a long and fast review, but uh, thanks for watching Time and Tide. That's what we're here for.